Ezekiel 33.3. In this video, we're going to take a look at the three wise men in our series, Exploring the Gospels. The Magi visit the Messiah, Matthew 2.1-12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. Many people know this story, but some people may know this story as three kings or three wise men, when actually it was three magi. When we take a look at the Greek behind these words, we can find that the word magos appears. A magos is a magian, an oriental astrologer, by implication a magician. In some usages, you'll see a sorcerer, a magician, or a wizard. I think magician and wizard would be the most accurate. We can see it's a word of Persian origin. It comes from the word Rab Meg. This word Rab Meg defines as a chief soothsayer, an official of the Babylonian king. And it has a word origin as well, which is Rab. So we'll take a look at that origin. A Rab is known as a chief. So we have chief, chief officers, and leading officers. What is the word Rab? which is chief, remind us of with a similar meaning. Rabbi. Rabbi, by definition, means my master or my teacher. You'll see in some cases, literally means great and number. So if rab means chief and rabbi means master, this reminds me of master chief from Halo, coincidentally. Halo is something you would see with an angel. Let's take a look at the word rab because there was more. Rab, which means chief, goes back to a word that is rabab. Rabab means to be or become many or much. Now, this is interesting because this looks like it directly connects to rabbi now. Because when we looked at rabbi, we saw that rabbi literally means great and number. So here we see great and number, or we see rabab, to be or become many or much. That means we have a Persian overlap here. So this caused me to pull up the Encyclopedia Aranica, to see if I could make sense of this. And this is what I found. While the Jews of Parthian and Sassian empires spoke Eastern Aramaic, not Middle Persian, Persian influence on Judaism through the Babylonian Talmud Bavli is by no means negligible. The Bavli is full of Iranian words and motifs, such as the resurrection of the dead, the last judgment, that are familiar in Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism is a religion in Iran, still practiced today by this matter. Zoroastrianism is a religion that is still practiced today in Iran and other parts of the world. Here's a map of the Persian Empire, and this is 559 to 530 BC. If we take a look here, we can see how it kind of wraps around the Persian Gulf. If we look today, the countries that touch the Persian Gulf would be Iraq and Iran. If we take a look, we can see that if we draw a line going from Iran all the way to Israel, we can see that it's possible that the Magi that came from the East quite possibly could have come from Iran. Is there a connection to these Magi that came from the East to the country of Iran, which we know was in Persia? This is a book called Zoroastrianism by John W. Waterhouse. I noticed this in the beginning of the book. It says, this little book is sent out with the hope that a greater appreciation may be found for the faith which sent three wise men to Bethlehem. So it looks like my guess was right. They were coming from Iran. So the Magi are the Zoroastrians. Yet the name Zarathustra, or Zoroaster, may have borne a similar connotation to the modern Parsi term Dastur, which signifies the spiritual overseer of a large community. Thus the, and please excuse my pronunciation, Zarathus Trotimo would be roughly equivalent to the Dastur i Dastarin, or chief priest of the Parsis. So this is kind of familiar. When we take a look at the word rab, which had an origin of rabab, rab meant chief. And of course, this is not a Hebrew word. This is a word that points back to Persia. So now things get interesting because we can see there's an overlap with the Zoroastrians, the Magi, and now the word rab, which means chief. So if the Magi were to come and visit the Messiah, According to Google, that'd be 2,323 kilometers, or 474 hours walking. Chances are, they didn't make it in a single day. 
From there, I took my research over to the New World Encyclopedia on their article on Zoroastrianism, and I highlighted this. Likewise, the concept of the halo, still commonly associated with saints and holy figures in art today, first originated in Zoroastrianism. That's really interesting, because right off the point where I saw Master and Chief in the connection with Rabbi and Rab, I was wondering if Master Chief from Halo might have been a play on words from Zoroastrianism. If we take a look at the symbol on the right, which is an image known as the Faravahar, it came to represent the human soul or guardian angel and is still used in modern Zoroastrianism. Okay, this is interesting because in his hand, it looks like he's holding something very reminiscent of a halo. It's a circle. So let's put it all together. The wise men equal the magi. The magi are the Zoroastrians from Iran. So the three kings or three wise men in the book of Matthew and Luke were actually the magi. The word magos or plural magi are oriental astrologers, magicians, wizards. The word origin of Magos is Persian, coming for Rabmeg. A Rabmeg is perhaps a chief soothsayer, an official of the king of Babylon. Rabmeg originates from Rab, which means chief. According to the Encyclopedia Iranica, the Babylonian Talmud, Bavli, was influenced by the Persians and has Iranian words as well as motifs from the Zoroastrian religion. The word rabbi means master or teacher and can mean great and number. Rab Meg, which is Persian, originates from Rab, which came from Rabab, which means to become many or much. It's pretty clear where the word rabbi came from now. It's not a Hebrew term. So there it is. It looks like the word rabbi came from Persia and overlaps with the Zoroastrian Magi. Now, didn't Christ teach us not to call any man our master? Let's look at Matthew 23, 8 in the King James Version. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. I decided to pull up Matthew 23, 8 on Bible Hub so I could see the parallels. And in a couple versions, I can see that the word rabbi has been switched for the word teacher. Now that's fine because we saw that when we we're looking it up inside of the uh, Strong's Concordance. Let's take a look at the lexicon and see what the translations are. So we have to call my master or my teacher. So here we can see this is where that's coming from. So rabbi means my master or my teacher. And then we can see that also the word teacher or instructor coming a little bit later. So in other words, we're not supposed to call each other masters or teachers. We are servants. So what I can see now looking at the lexicon, I can see in Matthew 23, 8, that the word rabbi means my master and teacher, as we already saw. However, we can also see the word teacher is instructor. So what we're told here by Christ is not to call each other master or teacher. If there's one Jedi left, it's not you. What we're told here by Christ is not to call each other master or teacher. Finish with this last slide to give you something to think about. Was the inspiration behind Master Chief from Halo a rabbi, an angel, a Zoroastrian, magician, wizard? It's something to think about. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Brothers and sisters, the sword is coming. If you hear the watchman's call, please repent and seek out Jesus Christ. There is still time.